In a previous C++ Builder XZ3 video, I showed you how to get information about the sensors and devices that are available on your system. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use two pre-built components for sensor control, the location sensor component and the motion sensor component. And these two non-visual components are built on top of the devices and sensors framework that's part of the runtime library that, and FireMonkey uh, can use those interfaces. So let's take a look first at what sensors I have available on my computer. And I showed you this in the previous video. I've got my application here. And let's get the devices. So here's a couple cameras on my Samsung Slate. And here's the different sensors that are available. Uh, orientation sensor, uh, three axis uh, accelerometer, magnetometer, and inclinometer. Uh, the ambient light sensor and the geosense sensor for location. There are two components that come with a fire monkey in C++ Builder XC3, the location sensor and the motion sensor. I'm going to show you two demo applications that use each one of those components. So let's start with the motion sensor. Uh, the motion sensor component is called T motion sensor. Uh, it has uh, property active and underneath it has some events on data change, sensor remove, state change. I'm going to mainly focus on the data change. And what the data change does is as the, the three axis accelerometer that's part of my Samsung Slate is built into the tablet, it gives me information, it gives me the acceleration X, Y, and Z since it's a three axis accelerometer. Now I'm going to also go to the sensor interface and get the angular acceleration, the speed and motion. But since I only have a three axis accelerometer, it's just give, gonna give me the X, Y, Z acceleration. But I thought I would uh, put uh, the other information in there uh, because you may have another device that has a six axis accelerometer and it might have a speed and motion sensor. So pretty straightforward, just use the component. I've got a checkbox here for activating and deactivating the motion sensor. And let's look at the on change event uh, for when I change the checkbox. And in here I say if the checkbox is checked, then I'm going to activate the motion sensor. I'll set the active property to true. And then in the memo box uh, on the form, I'm going to dump out the manufacturer name, the model of the accelerometer, the category of the sensor, and the type of the sensor. And if the checkbox is not checked, then I'll just deactivate uh, the motion sensor by calling active equal to false. Pretty straightforward. And there's other things, of course, we might do in an application to take the sensor data and do something with it. Maybe play a game or move the interface around as we're moving the tablet around. So let's run this application. And here's the memo down here where we're going to get some information. And here's these accelerations. Let's turn on the sensor. You know, the table's shaking a little bit, very small movements here in X, Y, and Z. And it tells me the manufacturer is ST Microelectronics, and it's a three axis accelerometer, X, Y, and Z. The category of the sensor is motion, and the sensor type is accelerometer 3D. There's a whole interface that's provided as part of the sensor uh, implementation for all sorts of different sensors if you have those devices. In this case, this is a motion sensor. There are environmental sensors. Uh, there are all biometric sensors, all sorts of different sensor APIs that are available in Windows 7 and Windows 8 and on other platforms. And of course, as we move forward into the world of, of devices, of handheld devices and so on, you might have temperature sensors, pressure sensors. Uh, you'll have uh, motion, of course, as you see on things like iPhones and iPads. And I've got that on this on my uh, slate, so you'll see bigger movements now. I'm sort of shaking the slate around, uh, and so you're seeing it versus just the uh, rumblings on the table. So that's pretty straightforward here is, is using that pre-built component. You can also write code, as you saw in the previous video, at the lower levels to use the sensor management to get at those lower interfaces. But in FireMonkey, it's nice that we give you uh, two components to start, and there'll be more components to come when we add additional devices. And so down here in the uh, in the tool palette, we have under sensors, we have the location and the motion sensor that are part of XE3 that we can use in our applications. Let's take a look at the second uh, sensor demo. This one uses the, the location sensor. Now, my slate doesn't have location built in, but I've installed a, a, a software driver called GeoSense for Windows. You can go to GeoSense 
or windows.com and download this Windows driver. And it uses TCP IP. It uses the internet and knowledge about where it is uh, to find an approximate location. Of course, if we had a GPS device, either external or internal, we get precise location data. Macintosh also provides interface location if you turn it on. And again, when you start these applications, uh, depending on the settings that you have for privacy, uh, you might get a pop-up box on Windows saying, this application wants to access the location where you're at, and then you can say yes or no. You'll also, on Windows, get an event, and on Macintosh, you can get an event log to see which applications have been accessing things like location. So here we've got a checkbox to activate the sensor. Uh, the, this is the location sensor that's a pre-built component that we can use in our FireMonkey applications. I've got two labels here that I'm just going to use to display the latitude and longitude. And I've got a memo down here where I'll display some information. The location sensor has several properties, uh, an accuracy number where you can say how accurate the location sensor might want to be, uh, how much distance move the location change here, uh, large or small uh, you can set what will trigger an event of a location change. I want small changes as I'm walking around, maybe in town or down the street. Uh, I've got the active property turn on and off. I'll do that with the checkbox. And there's several events. Again, there's on data change, uh, on location change. That's the main one I'm going to use uh, if the location changes within some uh, distance or some small increment of location change. And there's also uh, sensors choosing, sensor removed on state changes, other things you can hook in addition to the, the location change. Uh, my code here in location change, I'm simply going to uh, log into my memo that uh, I got a location sensor location change event with the date and time. And I do that on the other sensor events as well, just so I can see if they're happening or not. And if the location sensor change uh, happens, then I'm going to take uh, the parameter here, which is new location, that structure, and I'm going to get the latitude and longitude and display it in my two text labels. Now, the other work happens in the checkbox. When I change the checkbox, I say if the checkbox is checked, then I'm going to activate the location sensor. That's all I need to do. Uh, else, I'm going to deactivate the sensor if I uncheck it, and I'm going to clear out the latitude and longitude. And the rest is going to happen up here in the location change event uh, on that location sensor. Now, you might also want to add uh, information. For example, maybe you'd call Google Maps uh, once you get the latitude and longitude to display on a map the location. Or maybe you'd look up in a database to see uh, what restaurants or grocery stores or something else might be nearby to your location and pop up help hints for things that you might be interested in. In this case, I'm just going to display the latitude and longitude. And of course, as we move beyond just Windows and Macintosh and C++ Builder to support other devices, location becomes one of the big capabilities that people like to use on their handheld phones, their, their tablets, and so on. So let's just run this application and activate the sensor. And now I'm getting the data, which is uh, latitude and longitude. And down here, I, let's see if, oh yeah, it. Uh, I've got a little icon in the notification bar down here that says your location has recently been accessed. So we get a little notice uh, that's part of that, and we can view that location activity uh, in the event viewer on Windows, for example. And here we've got, uh, in the Windows event viewer, we've got uh, my date and time, and it said some location, act some activity took place. And this is just an information note. It says it came uh, on my slate, and... Uh, and again, it was uh, an application that asked for it called CPP location demo.exe. So you get information in the event viewer about the fact that somebody uh, did the location. So very easy with these non-visual components to uh, get the information that you need to location enable and motion enable your applications. In this case, with two pre-built FireMonkey components built on top of the sensor management that is in the runtime library for C++ Builder. You can use the pre-built components or you can use low-level code in the sensor management and sensor interfaces that are available in C++ Builder XE3. It's your choice. And that's how easy it is to do sensor-based operations using the pre-built location sensor and motion sensor in C++ Builder XE3.